so immanuel kant we all know that he talked about deontology deontology is basically a non consequentialist theory wherein your action is termed to be ethical if you are following your duty so you have to do your duty but you also have to care for rights of others so i am doing my duty but as a public servant i also need to be mindful about the public interest and their rights that is my by doing my duty i am being responsive to others theek hai so mujhe responsiveness pe bhi focus karna hai rights pe focus karna hai then there were categorical imperatives of immanuel kant which are very very easy to use in your answers ci1 2 and 3 ci1 says anything that can become a universal law is ethical for example love love is accepted as a universal principle and hence it is ethical but hate cannot be accepted universally hence it is unethical ci2 says that uh, treat human as an end in itself and not as a means so when i had earlier also taught this i had given you example of uh, a channel broadcaster leaking private conversations of rohit sharma and one of his uh, friends that is former cricketer abhishek nayar and that brought some trouble for rohit sharma so why the channel did is channel did that for sake of trp and all channel basically treated rohit sharma as a means towards gaining trp another application for this which i am 100% sure that you will get one question on it in this year's ethics paper is abortions so euthanasia or abortion or surrogacy they are treating human as a means towards achieving one end and they are not treating human as an end in itself the supreme court and the high courts recently have allowed or uh, disallowed termination of pregnancy in n number of cases that is why i think abortion as applied ethics question is expected in this year's paper in abortion what you are basically doing is you are not treating the fetus as an human itself okay you are only worried about the mother who is uh, seeking abortion but you are not worried about rights of the fetus so ci2 wahan pe apply ho jata hai bahut easily ci3 hai autonomy and kingdom of ends when i had taught you i had told you that not many are able to use this in their answers i personally also i never happen to use this in my answers i was not even aware about ci3 back then in my days so ci3 what it says autonomy and kingdom of ends that there is a hypothetical state that is worried about rights of every individual of that state and you are one of the citizen or member of such a state okay now you have to act in a way that your action can become a law of such a good state that is worried about everyone's rights and justice and autonomy so any action of mine that cannot be accepted as a law in this state will be unethical with respect to ci3 ठीक है सेकंड थिंग करते हैं हमारे मिल मिल गेव कंसेप्ट ऑफ यूटिलिटेरियनिज्म व्हिच आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इन नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स ग्रेटेस्ट गुड ऑफ ग्रेटेस्ट नंबर ऑफ पीपल दो इट इज मेजोरिटी इन व्यू दैट इट इज सर्विंग द मेजॉरिटी इफ आई एम डूइंग गुड इवन टू 80 पीपल आउट ऑफ 100 आई एम नॉट वरीड अबाउट दोस 20 बट दिस लीड्स टू मेजोरिटेरियनिज्म दैट आई एम वरीड ओनली अबाउट दोस 80 एंड नॉट 20 so utilitarian principle and he also talked about lower pleasures and higher pleasures where lower pleasures is in materialism it leads to short term pain and long term gain and higher pleasures are basically moral pleasures which lead to long term gain if there is any short term pain then you can make do with it because he also gives concept of hedonism wherein he says that short term sacrifices for long term gains are accepted theek okay. hai and lastly we also studied concept of empiricism wherein we uh, relied upon the past results the past decisions and learnings from them to arrive at practical uh, solutions then hegel i told you that 
if ever you get a question related to freedom, freedom not only in uh, literal sense, but freedom in sense of capabilities, uh, freedom in sense of autonomy, freedom in sense of rights, then please uh, write Hegel because his concepts are very applicable with respect to issues on freedom. He told that freedom of not only your own freedom, but freedom of others is also important. And hence he gave concept of absolute spirit, wherein he stated that my freedoms should be in sync with larger ethical perspectives and goals of society. So if I have certain right, I should exercise it in restraint so that my rights are in sync with the ethics of my society. So that is concept of absolute spirit and it can be easily used in case studies. Dialectical approach, we are anyway using this approach uh, in case studies when we give uh, options. So option one, you give synthesis. Option two, you give antithesis. Option one, thesis. Option two, antithesis. And option three, synthesis. Wherein option three becomes the best possible option in your case. Marx. I told you that we are all aware that though he's a sociologist primarily, his theory of uh, work and class struggle that can be used in work culture topic of syllabus. So now if there is any question related to work culture, we can write keywords such as alienation. What is alienation? That capitalist driven work culture leads to alienation of employees. They feel let down. They feel the disconnect. They feel that they are not adding value to things. Why they feel so? Because there is disconnection from self and capitalist culture basically does not recognize the contribution of the employees. So labor value is not recognized in such a culture. Rawls, uh, Rawls has been asked previously as well in 2016 main. So I do not expect a direct question on John Rawls. But then social justice theory is a very good one and it can be used in any question related to justice, social justice, racial justice, ethnic justice, justice of any sort. You can use this question, question on inequality, gender inequality. You can use this principle. Uh, principle of liberty says that we should be mindful of liberties of everyone. They should be common. They should be equal. Uh, difference principle says that Though we should be mindful of equal liberties for everyone, if there are marginalized or vulnerable people in my society, then I can treat them differently. I can give affirmative action to them. Then there is concept of original position and veil of ignorance. Original position is a hypothetical concept wherein it states that uh, we as citizens or we as public servants should make rules and regulations under a wheel of ignorance about our own pros and cons with respect to that policy. I had explained this to you with example of single use plastic man. So if I am a civil servant who is working on policy such as single use plastic ban, now I also use plastic in my daily life. But as I'm making that policy, I'll be driven by larger public interest. I'll have a veil of ignorance with respect to what benefits or what challenges that particular policy can have on me, on myself. So I will use original position and veil of ignorance to arrive at policies which serve justice for all and I will not be worried about myself. Bekia Veli, very interesting uh, thinker because his theory is completely based on realism with a pinch of salt of uh, pragmatism. In concepts of realism, in Machiavelli theory are ends justify the means that, that the king or the ruler can use any damn means to achieve his goals. Uh, he should appear to be uh, that of character, but in private he can use uh, dishonesty, deceit, etc. to consolidate power. He also talked about using any damn means to control your own destiny. I gave you example of Australian cricket team when they did ball tempering to win a test match. So they were trying to basically control their destiny. His views with respect to politics are that uh, politics and ethics do not go hand in hand. Uh, at least twice this question has been asked in UPSC. It can be asked again because elections were conducted just now. 
so this question becomes relevant again politics versus ethics and the counter view is that of mahatma gandhi which i had taught you previously wherein mahatma gandhi ji stated that politics religion and, and ethics go in hand in hand and seven sins principle also talks about politi uh, politics without principles so politics versus ethics now you have two views first is of machiavelli and then of gandhi ji for public servants there is very good learning with respect to a uh, uh, thinker machiavelli that personal and professional life should be separate if my professional and personal lives are not separate then that will lead to corruption in form of conflict of interest manifestation etc theek hai so this principle can be easily used in case study then we studied about epicurus i told you clearly that any question that you get with respect to greed you can use epicurus there uh, epicurus uh, believed in long term joy uh, rather than short term or momentary joy long lasting joy was his belief and he stated the means to achieve that and the reasons of unhappiness so the means to achieve long term joy is prioritization of task and not indulging in trivial matters i applied that for civil services in the previous class wherein i told you that there was one question previously wherein it was stated that civil servants who are busy in peripheral issues uh, and not taking care of the central issues or core issues they lead to travesty of justice and good governance so us concept ko humne yahan se seekha ke uh, if we are able to prioritize our task and if we are not indulging in trivial matters then we can lead to good governance and all and we will be serving long term joy not only for ourselves in form of moral joy but also uh, for the public in form of responsiveness unhappiness ke there were three sources as per epicurus first is greed of course then second is fear and third is religion he says that uh, religion if drives if thrives on fear of people who are following that religion then that religion will lead to fear of masses i had given you example of oh my god movie wherein there is dialogue of god fearing people versus god loving people so you should all be god loving people where you are believing in making or establishing a contact with the almighty rather than being a god fearing people then the pronunciation of next thinker which i called mr k is kuko go he is not k r k guard he is kuko go and for kuko go i had told you that anything any question related to life or perspective or truth anywhere you find such a question it should now click to your mind that you have to apply his teachings because he has uh, talked a lot about life and truth he has talked about respecting different voices different perspectives paying uh, heed to them listening to them now it is upon you whether you want to accept it or not but at least you should listen to other voices you may disagree you may agree but that disagreement should not mean that you are not even listening to people so there was very good quote also in theory uh, related to this that the real challenge is not when uh, people mistreated something like that the real challenge was when my voice was not heard ठीक है सो यू कैन यूज दिस थिंकर फॉर परस्पेक्टिव और डिस्कोर्स एथिक्स एक्सेट्रा देर इज कंसेप्ट ऑफ ऑथेंटिक लिविंग ऑल्सो एंड इन वन ऑफ द केस स्टडीज इन कंक्लूजन पार्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी अप्लाइड दिस इन प्रीवियस सेशन ऑथेंटिक लिविंग विच इज बेसिकली ड्रिवन बाय एथिक्स एंड एथिकल प्रिंसिपल लिंकन दो देर वर नो की वर्ड एज सच विच यू डिड नॉट नो बाय नो बिकॉज वी हैव स्टडीड ऑल दो की वर्ड इन aptitude and foundational class but then there were five quotes with the theory itself and i explained you those quotes so those quotes are relevant for you and for exam purposes carol gilligan is a different sort of theory that this thinker gave it is based on care and compassion and not just based on rights and justice so carol gilligan believes that ethics is driven not only by rights justice principles morals values but also by care and compassion in our actions in our thinking in our behavior so this particular thinker is uh, is driven by relational focus where we are 
in positive relations and reciprocal relations with our peers and society and uh, there is also learning with respect to contextual reasoning or taking the situations into account while analyzing the ethicality of action that is relative ethics that i am taking i am considering the situations of xyz person before arriving at decision that his or her decision his or her action was ethical or not i had explained you this with example of heinz dilemma and i took you back to the first class of my module wherein there is a person named heinz who needs a medicine for his wife uh, he is not having money the medicine is costly and it is at most needed for treatment of her wife now this is the dilemma should heinz steal the medicine or not if he happens to steal the medicine as per carol gilligan you should respect the decision and the decision can be called as ethical in line of care ethics in line of compassion in line of contextual reasoning where you are encountering for the uh, situations and lastly we studied about mandela and i had clearly told that though i do not expect a separate question on nelson mandela itself in ethics paper but if there is a question with respect to gandhi ji versus uh, teachings of mandela how they are similar or how they are unique then i had taught you basic theory wherein i had focused on two or three keywords with respect to mandela that is racial justice uh, justice and inclusivity and for gandhi you can write about sarvodaya principle you can write about swadeshi you can write satyagraha you can write about uh, his views on politics and ethics theek hai so this is the recap of our previous class wherein i taught you these 11 or 12 thinkers and this is how you have to apply them in your answers